2023, Fisker Ocean First Drive, Drives Nice, A Few Teething Issues. It's not often you can say you've driven or can buy the very first car from a brand new automaker. But today's proliferation of EV startups makes the event far more possible for far more people. The latest is the 2023 Fisker Ocean and all-electric midsize SUV from Henrik Fisker's new company, Fisker Inc. Versus Fisker's original company, the name of the game is largely the same, he and his firm are still hellbent on sustainability, but this time they're coming out of the blocks with a completely different car. While one could argue the ill-fated Fisker Karma plug-in sedan was ahead of its time, today's Fisker Ocean arrives in a market primed for it to succeed. After this initial experience, the Ocean seems to be a solid product with sound driving dynamics, a nice job for a first iteration product from a startup. There are a few bugs that still need to be worked out, but the overall execution is impressive. But why should someone choose this SUV from a relatively unknown automaker over one from industry stalwarts like Tesla, Ford, and Hyundai? The Ocean, what is it? Motor Trend International Bureau Chief Angus McKenzie wrote on the Ocean's origin and basics in his prototype drive published last year, we encourage you to read it to get up to speed with the Ocean's history up to this point. In person, the final production Ocean looks very much like an offshoot of the Range Rover Sports family tree, and this ain't no bad thing. It's blocky and chunky in all the right places and stands out against a backdrop of European hatchbacks and econoboxes. Dimensionally, it's about the size of the Ford Mustang Mach-E, Tesla Model Y, or Hyundai Ioniq 5, give or take a couple of inches. The cabin is a study in sustainable materials. No animal hides are used to upholster the seats. Instead, recycled carpeting, plastic bottles, and other polymers are used to create the interior materials. Surfaces are minimally painted to reduce potential impact to the environment. What isn't recycled plastic or faux leather is covered with Alcantara synthetic micro suede. Fisker put us in the Ocean Extreme trim, which is the model's top option. In terms of range, the Ocean Extreme's 113.0 kWh nickel manganese cobalt hyper range battery pack will deliver 360 miles of EPA estimated range. Lower trim versions of the car will use longer lasting lithium iron phosphate batteries. The Extreme's dual motor setup makes 468 horsepower and 514 lbft of torque, but in boost mode, the car will momentarily make more power, 564 horsepower and 543 lbft, it's a feature similar to that found in the Genesis Electrified GV70. There's a catch, though, currently, Fisker limits boost mode to 500 lifetime activations per car. It can increase that number if a customer wants more, but for now, the company is feeling things out and seeing how frequently people really do the next snapping EV acceleration party trick in real life. The extra power puts more wear on the driving components, Fisker reasons, so there's no reason to have the car do maximum power at all times if a driver only needs it infrequently. How it drives Anyone who pays attention to EVs from startups will be familiar with tales of quality and production issues, as they've cropped up at varying times at Tesla, Rivian, and Lucid. It seems like Fisker smartly circumvented the worst of it by outsourcing all assembly to Magnastair, the Austrian-based contract car manufacturer that also builds the BMW 5 Series and Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. Not only does that mean Fisker didn't have to establish its own factories, employees, and know-how, but also that its cars are built by people who very much understand how to do it well. The result is an SUV with good fit and finish that feels solid in operation. All the seats are comfortable and supportive, and even though there's a lot of visible plastic in the interior, it still feels like a quality place to be thanks to upscale detailing such as special striping and design motifs on the dash and seats. The Foxconn made 17.1-inch rotating screen, it motors from landscape to portrait, which is really cool, is clear and easy to read, even with the worst of the sun's glare. There's a row of physical buttons underneath it for climate and radio controls. Bless. The rear seats offer good leg and headroom, and the trunk is spacious with a flat load floor. Behind the wheel, the Ocean has the strong off-the-line hustle expected of an EV. Its low center of gravity makes it feel firmly planted on the road, and it drives much smaller than it is. 
The steel sprung suspension doesn't offer the same pillowy ride an air suspension would have, but the ride is still quite comfortable. In its most aggressive setting, the regenerative braking is powerful enough for one pedal driving and seamlessly blends the switch between the friction reg and brakes. There is also good weight to the steering, but we didn't find it particularly communicative. Keep in mind, though, it's a family car, not a sports car. Let's shout out two of the ocean's cooler features. The first is the California mode. With it, you can drop all the windows with one push of a button, but we're not just talking the side windows. California mode also lowers the small quarter windows between the C and D pillars as well as the rear hatch window, plus it opens the large sunroof. It's rad. Second is the car's solar roof. Under ideal conditions, Fisker says, it'll return about 1,500 miles of range a year. Even if it doesn't do exactly that, it looks cool and is a fun talking point. What wasn't as great? There are a couple of ergonomic nits to pick, such as the inside door handle being too unintuitively high and how the taco tray, a little foldable table that deploys from the center console, can't easily unfold on the driver's side if you have water bottles in the cup holder. There's also no glove box, instead, the passenger gets their own taco tray with storage moving to underseat drawers. Also, owing to the SUV's raked profile, rearward visibility isn't the best, but there is a digital rearview mirror to rely on. And Fisker has repeated the mistake of asking occupants to move the air vents via the touchscreen rather than the tried and true method of, you know, moving the vent with your hands. It's annoying in the Rivian R1T, and it's annoying here, too. As with the other companies that have done this, including Porsche, it's a solution to a problem precisely no one was having. In our prototype drive, we noted the car's brake pedal travel was too long, and that's still the case. There is a noticeable amount of dead space at the top of the stroke before any braking happens, which makes decelerating during more spirited driving difficult to predict. We also experienced some electronic glitches Fisker says may have been isolated to our specific vehicle. Isolated or widespread, we assume the problems are well on their way to being ironed out. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.